on the course. Stex of Creation up against Gambit. And like the panel was saying, getting into the heads of some of the players. Dream he had a bit of a blunder in his previous series. Let's see if he can pick things up. Uh, the the draft-wise looks pretty good for Gambit, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of favoring uh, Gambit's draft, to be honest, because they gave him a hero that he can't really mess up with. It's not a faceless void, the uh, gyrocopter can't really... No, no, no. A lot of things can go so wrong, right? With the gyrocopter, you use a flat cannon or a rocket barrage. They maybe, themselves. Maybe you can misclick a rocket on the neutral camp or whatever, but uh, yeah, I, I think they needed to give him a different hero. And now Emergent is trying to bully back our uh, not too much you can do there. He's, he's still looking to wrap in behind and maybe try and contest the next creep wave coming in. But like, like you say, exceptional job by Execration just to control that PR's lane as they have been doing. Uh, it looks like a similar thing going on up top, right? Gyrocopter's there at the top of the CS himself. Rubik, he, you know, got a courier snipe. He's trying to get back and block the pull camp. So he is making sure Treant isn't that complete nuisance in the lane and giving Broodmother as much experience as possible. I'm very aggressive. Skill build from Trent Protector in this one. Going oh, for the to scrap and the leech seed. Kinetic field from RR is going to try and hold them back. It looks like he'll just about die. Tipped over the edge by that immersion touch. Yeah, and first blood spilled. Exactly as I mentioned, uh, they get uh, level 3 on Darkshire, Nyx Assassin still level 2, and then they decide to make a move on Disruptor. Uh, not the strongest laner, they, they were playing the lane well, uh, item-wise, Ring of Bassy, more than fine, you're playing into, like, Nyx Assassin, he might get a single point in a mana burn as well earlier on. I've seen a lot of Roadmother games where she just falls off, I do not want to see Guardian Greaves into Pipe type of a build, I want to see another core, something that Old Eleven did at the end of the second season. Oh, yeah. Decided to go for a more of a right click build. Oh, here comes Brood. Can't see sexual hunger on the run forward. Spiderlings have all pretty much died though. And like you were saying, Rubik doesn't have that gap closed, so can't get on top of Dream. Turn back with the homing missile and that nature's grasped right on top of the brood mother. Down goes Nico. BDZ might be in a bit of trouble as well. A spot bother for the Rubik. Chasing forward. Ten that gyrocopter. He should be yeah, okay. Yeah, you're right. But uh, oh, he, he doesn't the use them. <laughs> Keyboard not working. <laughs> Didn't click it. Well, it's okay. not really a misclick, it's just a non click. He's not pressed his buttons. Happens to me all the time. And there's now a little bit of room top for Nico's broodmother. Start amassing this spidling army. Chip away at the tier one. Also, farm through the jungle and cut the waves. But it's, it's against the tree and I'll get on top of BZZ. Minus armor from that. Oh, that medallion. Look at him go. He gets burst down by the spiders. That's a good call down. A flat cannon and a ton of gold for the gyro in return. It's still okay. They're keeping the tier 1 tower alive. That's yeah. what matters. Tower full HP. They brought uh, Nyx Assassin top, so not too much done, but uh, Darcy doesn't care too much about it. Feels uh, very safe. Has uh, infused raindrop going into Vanguard next. I love that. Might even upgrade it against the Phantom Lancer, against the Broodmother. I wouldn't mind seeing a Crimson Guard here. Immersion up top. Trying to contend with not only Spidelings of Brood, but also Yoe's rotation. Wind Ranger looking to try and pressure this tier what one a little happened? bit against that living armor and the Treant's defense. And it looks like with a catapult wave, they should be able to claim this objective. While there's, there's no real pressure on the rest of the map from Gambit, is there? But they can defend the tower. Overgrowth is available. Cooldown in 20. They want the Wind Ranger. Oh, he's not close enough to get the overgrowth, and they've still got a lot of spiders here for Nico. Back towards the tree, and BZZ down half HP. They'll turn to the rocket barrage, force the spiders back, and they will stop that four-man push and rotation into top, as Execration have ditched the bottom lane, bringing Phantom Lancer to the triangle now. Phantom Lancer will have the Fusal Blade ready in 300 gold, and then he can join potentially on the top lane. Uh, this is where he's going to feel fast. very strong. It's a f pretty fast one, yeah. He's rushing it. No. The power tries, no raid bands, nothing. Oh, they miss out on the field. They don't see the next inside. Not too many pale back into the wall. Beautifully done by Gambit. That's going to lift their spirits, but the Shackle Shot focus for our the Dream now. The Wind Ranger wants a bit of action, but the Overgrowth holds them all in place. Allows the turn around yet again. The stolen three man, the Ravage from Rubik. Oh, hello! Sliced down with a power <laughs> shot! Wow, that was nicely done. Rubik, this is the spell that you want to have. Impale, it's only level 2. I like that Nyx Assassin is putting more points in a carapace, just mm. lower the cooldown, because it scales really well. Just the duration and the cooldown, of course. Oh, Five per level. Jeez! Run off down to within an inch of his life, but he turns back onto this Wind Ranger. She's got Wind Run yet again. 
Some more flanks, still so getting changed. Misses out on the way forward. They'd have to strike the strength one. There's an inverse room there for the Wind Ranger. They turn. Yeah, the chain stops. The more flank. Can he shift? He can quickly. Under the thunder strike, he slows up a available. bit. They do have the glimpse back. You're right, Lacoste. Drag him into the waiting arms of the rest of Execration. Indeed. And now Lauren will down the gas. He's got no backup. There's no team to save him. No one actually keep it to save him. Surprising. Support, immersion. Now that I clicked on him, has a TP ready. Maybe it wasn't available at the time. I don't see the reason why he would not uh, TP to save him. Nowhere to be seen. I want to see how it ends up. You know, you get that Guardian Greaves, Nyx Assassin, back back. Yeah, good stuff. Oh, I was after life to grab up the kill as well. Oh, hang on a second. This smoke from Execration could be huge onto the Morphling. Lorinov, do you have fast enough fingers? He does. Strength shifting. He's in the sack storm. They've got the catch, but they don't have the kill, I don't believe. The stun from Rubik. The focus fire coming, but Lorinov turns. He's fine. Beautifully done as he survives, and they get back onto the Wind Ranger. Blowing through Yoi. It's always tricky to gank Morph if he's fast enough but with the fingers, overgrowth. They're just gonna get an extra kill. Snipe with down. that, Lorenov actually snipes him when he turns into Wind Ranger. And doesn't even need to go back to base to heal. Has that morbid mask, possessed mask, sorry, that you talked about, plus the living armor from Treant. Yeah. Rune spawning uh, in the triangle, might pick it up. Keep that pressure up there. Try and get onto the tier two. I mean, RR, BDZ, they are still in that top jungle area. Well, this opens up the rest of the map for Gambit. Now, bottom lane being farmed out completely by Lorenoff. The triangle's cleared by Dream's Gyro. And it's this dual core with, you know, the, 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 the you're saying that, oh, wait, oh, well, that's emergent. Shackle's not going to catch him, dusted but too late. Spidling's almost all cleared through and a great carapace to stop the power shot from hitting him. Hard to kill. Just max out carapace, 10 second cooldown. And I got the turn on RR. Find him instead. Or did he try and glimpse the illusion? Yeah, killed an illusion, immediately respawns. Kinetic field comes, but all too little, too late. They still managed to kill Immersion. Long distance snipe, power shot plus Fade Bolt will do the trick. And now Spike Carapace stolen. You would ideally want to have Impale, but there are some uncontrollable damage. Is that a shackle shot an illusion? That's not ideal, but it'll snipe the courier regardless as BZZ dragged to the low ground with a vacuum up. Rubik sends Sky with the stolen Stole vacuum back. though, and a shackle shot latching on the back of the lounge your way to get the focus fire, but he's overgrossed up. Uh, he shot the shot and again, he's got them caught up inside, and BDZ's gonna TP home. Afterlife, uh, he might be able to turn with Immersion and Dream here arriving, but Yahweh sprints away with the wind run, and Immersion's left isolated by the rest of his squad. Afterlife arriving again, Iron Shot's coming, and the adaptive strike the shackle shot, Yahweh, he turns it back onto him once. Once more, Morphling can't get anything done and Emergent needs the surge to save him. Power shot again, oh, gets him! He gets him! Man, Yoey has been on point with those power shots. And now they've got Dream stuck. Thunderstrike with the connect field, he has to BKB. BKB wasted. Essence Ring still available. Living Armor as well. So he will live, but... Um, Great trade for Execration. They, that's exactly what they need to do. Play a bit more aggressively. Broodmother still taking the top part of the map, controlling the jungle. They're farming incredibly well. Still a little bit behind the docks here, though. The counterpart there is POS3. Around 8,000 net worth as mid lane. Static Storm. They know there's no BKB on Gyro. The Focus Fire and that nuke from the Broodmother clears up the Gyrocopter. Career Snipe and the Glimpse back on Afterlife. Ducks here, dragged in. He's got a vacuum in a wall. Catches out a couple, but that Impale only on to one. And then Pipe saves them all. Nico keeps the Spoilings alive while BZZ. Overgrowth in two seconds. Kinetic Field will trap Lauren off an Afterlife inside. Emotion can't move either. And the Battle to shreds through the tree. And yeah, he's done for. Do you got a bit of trade on to RR there? Afterlife Illusions causing a little bit of chaos. But Execration with that kill on Gyrocopter so meaningful for them. Now we might start to see the strength of these two supports. Disruptor and Rubik roaming towards the Morphling, but they won't find Lorenoff. And he does buy the Talisman of Evasion, so he's going to Butterfly. Could be just a casual Talisman. I 
don't know if this is like a good build. Good build early on. Having a 25 minute firefly sounds good, but you're still rather squishy. They yeah. can burst you down. Like your effective HP isn't that great without without more strength, without more HP. Sentry ward. Vacuum, stun. Good static storm feel. Two of them stuck inside. The shackle shot there towards the dark here. They do blow through BDZ, but the Phantom Blood's starting to arrive with his illusions. They'll keep back Gambit, but the Morphling's moved in aggressively onto Yoei. Adaptive strike there. Not going to finish him off, so Wind Ranger fine. And the pressure continues and mounts on that mid tier one tower as Gambit bring the numbers. Forced the buyback from the Rubik, and now the doppelganger away by the PL. The tower's down. That's what they came for, and that's what they'll claim. All the glimpse back. BKB available. He had time to BKB, but they're going to protect him. Everyone's just going to get there. Uh, not farm for him, so that means that the Nico will take the tier 2 tower. What a top lane. So now Gambit have to change their plan. Move Gyro down to bottom lane, it looks like. Try and protect him down there instead, but Nico, yeah, no tier two means outpost belongs to the Brood Mother, and that's going to be a really difficult objective to reclaim at any point against Brood. These supports, they're relatively tanky. Nyx Assassin has a carapace. You have uh, this twin protector with the holy locket, uh, just amplifying the healing for himself and for the team, plus the overgrowth. So I, I don't think it's that good. I don't think he's going to be able to just stand the ground and fight. Yeah. Need some more stats potentially. Their heroes are also not good at going in and out multiple times. Like BKBs are down, you're gonna get blown up. That this is what the mana burn really excels at, which is maxed out. I really love what the immersion on Nyx is, is doing. Oh yeah, against all these in heroes, right? Disruptor Rubik and the Wind Ranger, the, the prime one. As they move into Roshan. Gambit, they know they're strong around this timing. Morphling Gyro, they're ready with all the team fight behind them, like we're explaining. Like, playing into overgrowth plus vacuum wall inside the pit. That's a mess. It's really a mess. Power shot is gonna miss. Broodmother coming from the north. They and see her. they see the brood. They're spamping it out. Saying, hey, Nico, careful, buddy. They've got a stun coming in onto the broodmother. Nico trying to heal himself up. He's got the pipe. He's got solar crest. He's tanky inside these webs as well with the essence ring. The overgrowth catches and the cooldown comes. So brood down. And Roshan opens up again for Gambit. Well, Yoei, he's forced to BKB wind run. His mana already got burned. One mana burn. It's a four second cooldown ability. Very nice. That's a free Roshan for Gamma now, isn't it? A Broodmother, if they want to contest, they need to buy back on a Broodmother, otherwise the... Rosh just goes down. Yeah, they can't. One third. Right, it is first Roshan, so it's not, not a massive deal, it feels like here. But it's still momentum out of the hands of Execration and firmly in the grasp of AS Monaco Gambit. Well, Afterlife pops the smoke on Disruptor, so another failed move. Execration get a bit of a high ground ward going. Try and look towards that mid tier two and the dire triangle area. Now it's going to be much easier to execute the combo. Immersion, Nyx Assassin went for a blink dagger nice. after just finishing off the fluffy hat. <laughs> finishing it off. It's an expensive item, Gary. He's going to sew it himself, put all the components together, and he's going to lead the charge here with Afterlife, surging the Morphling. Lauren off. They see the Phantom Lancer illusions, and they know he was nearby oh, recently. Disruptor is a good Disruptor camp. and a DDPL from the high ground. They catch out the tree at first, but the vacuum wall stun on two. They're going to blow through all oh, oh, the stack stall comes out, but a little bit too late as they've already destroyed the Wind Ranger. yoway has gone with no buyback in Gambit. Once again, a firm grasp on this radiant side of the map. They're just too tanky. They, they, I don't think they have enough damage to actually kill a hero. No, that, that mid game had to go much better for Execration for them to, to really levy themselves some kind of momentum, and so far it's just been Gambit all the way. Now this first Roshan, I say just going to claim them up some tier twos. They will have to address the Broodmother problem back in their base. Oh, stolen mana burn. He's probably going to pay with his life for that one. Yeah, pay for his insolence. No more stealing my spells. He's got a carapace. I don't know. No, no, no. BDZ's done. Seems like it's the mana burn patch again. I remember oh, yeah? Medusa when she was stealing mana <laughs> plus the next assassin. You get both of oh, these. Yeah. He's going on a one man mission here. Master stars away from the overgrowth. The glimpse on to the next assassin, it looks like. But he's, he's, he's out. He's blinked away. Emerges perfectly fine. And they're going to try and surge BZZ out of the grasp of that Phantom Lancer. Doppelganging forward, but can't latch onto a target. And that's Crimson Guard doing God's work. They just don't have enough damage. Love the build on Afterlife. We're going to go into Guardian Green which will replenish some of the mana, give them more tankiness, and now aiming up for a blink dagger. So even better execution of the combo. They caught the gyrocopter, who's also going into butterfly. Phantom Lancer's gonna 
serves the gap on him though. And Dream has the BKB, there's a nice one from Yoa too. Trying to turn back on to Dream as the BKB is about to wear out. A little power shot towards the Treant as well. Execration, they're edging forward. They want to continue this battle knowing that there are a number of cooldowns that Gambit no longer have at their disposal. A more flank shackle shot in, but still holding on to Aegis for about a minute. Yeah, away falling forward. Wind rain getting caught out, but no shackles. BKB. There's a shackle shot from Lauren off. He got mad. He got shackled so many times. Will turn into Wind Ranger most the of the time. Bumper. And another one. Lornoff goes Max Achi and emerges there with the chain stuns. One after the other. They all fall to pieces. <laughs> Aegis will be reclaimed in 30 seconds. Going into MKB next. He's going full agreed on this Morphling. He's going big right click build. They're going to fight RR here. Yeah. Can't escape. Gambit 18 to 9. Nice solid. 6k lead for them. They're even thinking about pushing high ground. Force some buybacks here at the very least. Aegis, what, in five seconds or so? PL does not have damage. He is annoying. His mana burn is also annoying. Something that no one wants to play into, but where's the damage gonna come from? Yeah, they've got a lot of heroes that are nuisances, but no real threats. Darks here, like you've been saying, the perfect build for him. Sustains and heals and turns off the Parlos. He just kills off the Phantom Lancer. It's a good shackle shot towards the ball fling the DS. Can they kill him? Oh, blown off says absolutely not. I'm gonna turn a shackle shot at you! He's got it catching the rim in the back as well. The static storm whips out on Palos. They do fly back to the PL. In comes the blink overgrown from BDZ though, saving the ball flick. And they've got the follow through. Get him to wait for away. Shaq was shot yet again. Latching onto the next behind him. And a BKB TP from Gyro gets him out of safety. So they'll trade a couple of lives here to extricate themselves from the Radiant base. Oh man, this is good for Execration. They keep the Barracks alive, so Barracks was at uh, 100 <laughs> HP. Seems like the Shackle Shot is the best ability in the game. Apparently so. I still don't know how the Morphling managed to catch two heroes when it is. But BDZ's in the mid lane now. Another Shackle Shot emerging. And oh, no, he's ready to the gem. The gem on him. Oh, that's a bit of trouble for him. Emerging still stuck in the field, and that's it dropped. Did they note it? Oh, they do. They pinged it out. It was his gem to start with. RR bought it, so. They need to give him back. Original Omner. And they are going to smoke. Well, this is the Roshan fight they've been waiting for. Second Roshan. 45 seconds away. And who's the catch? It's Rubik up top. There's also a Wind Ranger here nearby. But Afterlife smoke popped. He blinks up to high ground and finds nothing. I do get a courier. So not nothing in the end. There's something. Roche will respawn in 30 seconds. Lanes are in a decent state for... Gambit, mid across the river, bottom uh, they have creep advantage and they will push out the top lane. And a smoke from execration, and PL, Wind Ranger, sending their lances, illusions and power shots into mid to shove the wave across. And a haste rune gonna get grabbed up by the Rubik, no he's gonna leave it there for the bottle refill of the Wind Ranger. Oh. It's also 6,000 gold unspent on Broodmother, which is another 5k gold lead kind of for Gambit. Yeah. Because if you don't have items, you're really not doing anything right. with it. Thanks, right, worthless. Right, they're going to get some D warding going. They jump high ground, three man back wall, but a good stunt turn around back onto the ball fling around the BKB. They blow through the Rubik. BDZ's down. Still some decent expenditure by Gamut to get that one kill, so Execration not too sad about it, but they need to contest this Roshan. Execration doesn't have a way of starting a fight. They don't have that position four that goes in, Broodmother can scout things out, yeah. power shot. Like if she lands a good shackle, we'll need to follow it up by a focus fire plus a BKB. It's already they a have to move. BKB. The power shot scouts, but Roshan's already dead, it looks like. Lorenoff gets the Aegis. Phantom Lancer throws out some lances. The Static Storm's down, but the PL's caught out. He's the Glimmer, he's the save. The Doppelganger away. Gyrocopter coming to clear Big the illusions. They're on the ground vacuum. They've caught the two of them. Down goes RR, and all oh, BDZ with that buyback has to retreat, but Parlos scouted. They see the Wind Ranger too, and emerges and sets it up with a stun. Oh, look at him go! The Phantom Lancer didn't stand a chance in hell. He's dead for a hundred seconds, and probably game over. Lancer's just not dealing enough damage. He kind of got baited by this build, which is okay 
in certain situations. I don't think this was the situation playing into two Agicores. You need to be able to match up against them. Uh, supports are n tanky enough. Like, you, you are annoying, but you don't deal enough damage. And this build from Darkshire not allowing them to actually get any kills. Guardian Greaves keeping them alive. Living Armor plus the Crimson Guard. And they're going to go for the finish. Yeah, they're going for Tier 4s and throw. They know he doesn't have buyback. They've timed it. It's Storm Corban for two minutes. So that means there's no Phantom Lancer, no damage, no nuisance. And they're just going to go for Tier 4s and throw. It's, it's a Shackle Shot, sure. But Afterlife, he's got so much heal and sustain. He's fine there with Living Armor on top of him as well. And Loranov is just pummeling the throne. That's... So this is what we call zoning abilities, Gary. Zoning wall, oh, zoning down. BDZ's in, but the game is over. I call it GG. Gambit, take game one. And this is a big win for them. You know, Dream after the performance on Void in uh, for sure. game number two. Now he gets pretty much a perfect game. I believe he died only one time on the gyrocopter. Get his confidence up and uh, he delivered. Like, he, he, they gave him the hero that he really shines on. Not a big, like, Rubik, man. I, I don't know how many times I've said it during the last season. This hero just straight up loses the game. So Lacoste, here we've got the Life Stealer bombs that need to hit their timings and a ticking time bomb in the Anti-Mage on the other side. Which way are you leaning for these two drafts? I'm leaning towards, let me just check, Execration. They have Anti-Mage plus Slash Track. What I want to see from Gambit is aggressive tri-lane against AM and just leave Timbersaw alone in one of the lanes. So, you know, put some more pressure on AM. Just try to shut him down if... That doesn't happen, I'm a bit worried, you know. They don't have any oh, team fight whatsoever, Enchantress no, plus Lime, no, they're strong no, laners, no, they have a no, Timber no, Saw, no, but um, no, AM, no, no, no. two items can easily just take over the game, especially against the Storm Spirit. Eventually, you're gonna need to get a Lincoln Sphere, because you might kill your own team, something that you don't want to do unless you're griefing. So then we're relying on these Storm Spirit timings around his items, the Life Stealer Infest Bombs to try and catch out yeah. individual targets with the Lion and the help that they have there. Kind of use the Timber Saw as bait, potentially. And that life stealer is moving. Dream, like you said, made that swing from bottom lane back in towards mid. Might even consider sniping out this little bounty rune at the bottom spot. And he's waiting down there. We might get three for Gambit. He runs up towards RR. And Bloodright is going to zone him away. And Dream misses out on it. So just going to be the... Oh, it's not a two for two. Look at that little sneak out from BDZ. Grabs the third one for Execration. Right, bottom lane. Looks like they're trying to get in towards that Nyx Assassin and the Bloodseeker. Dream. And just going to whack out Nico, get him away from that lane. Got a Harpy there for the BZZ Enchantress. And like you've been saying, they've been blocking up these caps. There's all Storm Spirit. He's hit level 6 and goes off your way with a TP rotation arriving stick. now from the wall. Lock the Very stick. The third available. Lauren going to be a return kill. He's got the ball lightning, but not enough mana to get the distance. The Pulse Nova and oh, First Blood oh, grabbed up oh, by your left track. Walk is not even needed. All he needed to do is pop a stick, a bottle, Fairy Fire not even used. Like, he's not respecting the damage coming out from left track. And Yowei, level seven and a half almost, that lash back to Fountain, could think and consider about his first rotation, or the stacks we see there on our screen could come and clear through them as RR has built up beautiful bank in that dire jungle and gets a D-Ward. No, oh, that rotation from Yowei got scouted. Timbersaw popping the mango. He yeah, needs another one. Left. Oh, gets burned. There's the mana burn and the void. Nice stun from Yoa as well, clear through Afterlife. Well, Storm Spirit is stealing a couple of those stacks that the Warlock had been picking up. That was very costly, that he popped two mangoes, died, and now Lashrak can uh, go for a rune, can try to invade enemy triangle, see if there are any stacks there. Also, free bounty, why not take it? Oh, thank you very much. When does Gambit really want to try and hit their stride? Is it, is it around a, a Storm item timing, the Armored Life Stealer? What's, what's the game plan? Problem is Timber is getting shut down. He's not gonna feel comfortable playing into Lash because it's mixed damage. It's mixed magical and uh, physical damage. Yeah. Two supports are really not oh, that good at, at rotating. The lion is okay-ish, but uh, Enchantress mostly focusing on the laning stage. Sword Spirit always gonna need to be careful. One rotation from Anti-Mage. Bam. Mana Void, uh, you can kill him, plus one extra hero. Potentially, you need to be very careful about it. Nico on the bottom lane after finishing the Mana Boots, going into Road of Athos against Storm Spirit, against Timbersaw. That's just going to be a really, really good item. Something that we don't see. 
teams taking the safe lane tower. No oh, Storm! He's been found oh, out! <laughs> Last track, one of the better heroes to just overall clear creeps around the outpost. I think that needs to be fixed in the next patch where Dire has a much yeah. bigger advantage in terms of that. Like, you can farm uh, those two camps uh, easily, and exactly what Leshrac does. Yeah. He's there and will farm it. The proximity of those camps. So nice for Medusa, for Leshrac, for Gyro, all these heroes. Clear through them at ease, and that's going to put him over 5,000 net worth, like 5.2k. So he's going to be sitting on that Yule Scepter now, 10 minutes in. He'll have it about 10.30. And this is a good time for him to go and smoke around with the Nyx Assassin, who's also hit level 6. So he'll have Vendetta to scout, start things off, and Yoi can look for these early pickoffs. And Storm Spirit is an ideal candidate to go and grab because, like we've been saying, they need the Storm Lifestealer to get the ball rolling. It's emergent. He'll chain stun the left track, but he's going to get found here by the AM and the Nyx Assassin. Lion will hand over his life to Palos. Ooh, and they want to give kill to Palos, but it's going to take away what? He's going to live. Lion's going to juke away from this one. I mean, BBC, there's okay. the stun, takes the kill away from AM, but a bit of miscommunication coming through from Execration, maybe. And this allows a bit of time now for Gambit to get into mid lane. Catapult wave, shove into the tier one. And Nico forced to stand his ground and defend it. A wrap around from Yoe though. Lauren off can ball lightning. He doesn't get it off in time. Yules in a split earth. They're going to catch the Storm Spirit out with a chain stun. It's perfectly timed. And Lauren off. It felt like he should have seen that. See that one coming. It's one of those difficult spots where you, you commit to the treads and you're thinking, wait, if I'd knock on treads and Orchid rushed, maybe I would be in a better position. It's just too many counters. He had a good start. Now Lestrak rushing that Yule Scepter. Great setup for either him or Nyx Assassin yeah. playing into AM who has Battle Fury finished. 12 minutes in, no boots, has a band of Elven skin. So yeah, pretty damn good timing. Yeah, and we're looking at these towers fall. You know, you mentioned the two side lanes going down early. Lauren off bottom, turn around, stun with a finger of death, and Yoe destroyed by Immersion. Baiting out the Lauren off Storm and guarding him with his life. But in come the Fatal Bonds and the Gola. Great rock dropped on the Storm Spread. He starts up as well, so he's going to get taken down by the Bloodseeker. RR picks up the final touch as Immersion under this tower. He's ruptured up, and the Golem just whacks him into the ground. It's a double for the Warlock. Unfortunately for them, Leshrac died, but uh, they got a clean-up crew. Afterlife. They should Ooh, be a good wants, kill on Warlock. He wants RR, but there's a Carapace from BDZ and a stun out. I'll hold that timber saw back. Yeah, the, the fact that this Storm Spirit now is he's being dumpstered pretty hard by Execration it means you're going to be missing out on those Lifestealer Infest bombs. Timbersaw didn't have a, a terrific start to his game, so he's not applying that same amount of pressure out on the map as a target for them to go on. And AM, he's freely farming. Execration Draft is well-rounded. They have good early game. Uh, they have counters to the enemy heroes. You're never going to feel comfortable against Rupture. As a life stealer, as a Timber Salt, you have this mixed damage coming up from the Oh, land. no. See ya. BZZ shredded. Half BZZ. a second. BZZ. Second kill still. It's not like I'm counting, but, uh, you know, this is the second one that I noticed. You have a win condition for Execration. You don't need to go greedy with the items. Uh, Leshrac not going Boots of Travel, which I really like. Just wants to be able to fight with the team. Sanj, like Kaya Sanj is okay. So BKB good. is also okay. I prefer Kaya and Sanj in this situation. But yeah, Boots of Travel would be relatively greedy considering you have AM in the team. So he, like you, you got that covered. You also have a relatively good scaling hero coming out from the off lane with the Bloodseeker. And you've got to know that the way back into this from Gambit is, is, with, a, is with those Lifestealer bombs, so if you play as five, you're not susceptible to being jumped. Group up together and stick and play together around that top tier one. That should be a simple, systematic maneuver here from Execration, and that's how they've got to play. No need to be rushing around doing anything crazy, just play your heroes, cast your spells, move around the map as a, as a solid unit. Force Gambit to be the ones to react to you. Anti-Mage going for Manta style. I would prefer if this is SNY more than uh, Manta. I've seen that quite often. Okay. Follows. Because he has nothing to dispel. Make the jump. Oh, that's a nice blow up on the next assassin. BZZ. That's BZZ and BDZ, right? They're grabbing all the kills. Enchantress and Nyx getting themselves up on the board. We'll see what AM decides to go for, because there's nothing to dispel. Like, mm. he can't really dispel a single thing. Doesn't care too much about the enchantress. It's all about that status resistance when you're playing against Lion. Manta gives you more 
Kel potential, you blink on someone, Mantis style, burn mana faster. We'll just see what oh, he lion. decides to go for. Lion, lion. 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 he's dropped. Yo, like, that Lashrak just outputs so much damage. Now, right, Execration take the bottom portion of the map now. Jungle all controlled up. Even scanning Roshan to make sure that Gambit aren't sneaking into that pit for an Aegis. Right, so a pretty balanced, even game, though. You know, eight kill difference, but Gambit are keeping competitive in terms of net worth. Life still is up there, nearly at the anti -mages level, and they do move into Rosh after the scan was used. So maybe unexpected here, and his execration completely out of position, and no way for them to really contest this. They don't know this is happening at the moment, so it's gonna be good. A Stormfront needs to get it. Stormfront needs to pick it up. The and best Aegis carrier in the game. Give that to Lauren off, absolutely. PZZ can move out of the pit, see if he can spot anyone coming, but no. Execration unaware of that Aegis being taken, and now it is dead even in terms of net worth, but Aegis advantage for Gambit. Gary, I know these mid players. Do you think he's gonna switch to Kaya Sanj? Because he is holding on to Aegis. Just simple. On the storm? On the storm. Simple yes or no. What about Bloodstone? No, no, no. He, no. Has, he, he needs to upgrade the Ogre Axe. Oh, Better I see. Sorry. BKB or Kaya oh, Sanj. Then. No, he's gonna go BKB. I think Laura, I trust Laura enough to make the, the rational decision. That's rational, but knowing Dota players, I think <laughs> he might go for it. Let's see if he gets a kill. It before. looks like he will be able to grab Nico there, and a golem dropped on their heads, though, for the finger of death. Finishes off the Blood Secret. The AM jumps in, takes out the Aegis immediately. Dream in a spot of all the now turns on your way. They've got a lot of damage. The physical shred through. Flash rack down and out. As Storm Spirit will ball lightning off to the side towards Warlock. But Gambit able to reset here potentially. But under the stun well, well, right. Get the dream life steal. I catch him with Parlos. Anti mage clears through him. But Storm makes the secondary jump. Nice heal. Sustain coming through for the AM as Afterlife holds his ground. And Nico. I see if we can chase this one. He misses out the timber chain. AM wants back in. They'll find their fourth kill. It's actually a five man wipe, including that Aegis and Execration needed two heroes yeah, and one five match. Like, imagine if Flash Rack used his abilities in that fight with the, the Fatal Bonds. Uh, Stormfury just dies immediately. And you lost the Aegis. Uh, you can't afford to get Kaya and Sanj. You need to get that BKB. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's the tower. Third time lucky. Execration take that tier one top. And they are playing very patiently. Again, it's just that group up, stay together, make sure that no one is an obvious target for the storm infest bombs. And it forces Gambit to go out hunting and looking for a big team fight. There's a lot of scribbling on the map there, Lacoste. It, it feels like they're a little bit yeah, confused very, about where they want to go. Very artistic theme overall. Just, uh, you know, while they're playing Dota, they're drawing some stuff on the minimap. A bit of cubism, a little bit of impressionism going. Got our very own. Uh, Around Picasso's here on Gambit. BDZ Vendetta, so he'll be able to scout any smokes coming from the right hand side. And Execration playing the fog in the tree lines. This is a nice little spread. High ground ward, the Tinker Ward on the left side. And BDZ, he'll see Afterlife. Doesn't want to really kick things off on a Timber Storm. And Lashrak, the turnaround, they blow through Afterlife almost immediately. Nice yours up as well as Lorenov's BKB spent into the Golem. They get the big stun in. They'll take him down. Oh, it's a beautiful catch off to Dream as well. The Life Stealer and Timber Saw shredded in an instant. And Yahweh still alive. They save the Lashrak. Keep that magical damage going. A triple kill into that final touch onto Storm Spirit and Gambit. Left without a hope or a prayer. Big play from Yawi. There he is waiting. He gets a stun on Timber Saw. That's a five map. They're gonna wipe them off the face of the map, and oh, Yahweh comes through again. That's another one. <laughs> yeah, he's holding on to Yule Scepter. Storm Spirit uh, tries to jump him. Understand that he is going for him. Uh, Yule Scepter, while Cold Snow plus Edict is running, he needs to back off while still dealing the damage, and this should be a free tier two tower. I don't, I don't want to be too negative, Gary, at the moment, but I just don't see that this lineup can win against what Execration yeah. got. It's pretty much like. You had your time. This uh, you needed to be focused on the laning stage with Lion, with the uh, Timber Tempo, Tempo. Tempo. Exactly, and then you kind of lost the momentum. Didn't get too much out of the laning stage. Now you're. And I talked about the team, rest of the team not being greedy, <laughs> just getting um, items to fight with. Last track, Yule Scepter done. Going into Kaya Sanj, getting a BKB. No Boots of Travel. Oh, yeah. I, I think most of the players would still want to get Boots of Travel, but since you have AM in the team, there's really no need for it. Oh, the chain stuns. Fatal Bonds. The death of Afterlife yet again. That's a die back on him as Lauren up. He makes the jump towards PDZ, but they can't get a single pick off. A nice two-man stun, though, and a finger of death. Finally, the last.
Kawhi gets involved, but three. That's a lead. He's he not going over here. Dollar. With the jump from Palos. That's it. Gambit are done for. A double for so Palos. Speezy's so so hitting it in. He's under the Glimmer Cape. We're going to sprink off to the right hand side, but the AM tracks back. Has the Enchantress's number. Gives her a little ring and says, oh, come on, that's a double down. with a first hit bash. Of course he does. Makes the jump again, and another Glimmer not going to work out. As BZZ down, and Lauren off the last hero standing for Gambit. I would not be surprised if they call GG once it's they close. lose, like, Roshan fight, which uh, could potentially be up in the 20 seconds. Execration, they've, they've really nailed this one. They've got the, uh, the last little they nail got, in the coffin. They really right? got a better so draft that's overall. That's like, uh, they played that's the lens so wall. Uh, AM pick uh, was really good in terms, in terms of, like, securing uh, the farm with the Warlock and just uh, setting him up for a really good game. It was a 12-minute battle fury. We're going to come back into the game. Hala, Lauren of Zed again. Yeah, I mean, has, has he got buyback? There's no buyback there for 45 seconds. So there's no Storm Spirit. BCC is trying to glimmer. Great stun again from the Lion, but we just haven't seen much from this Lion aggressively. It's always been counter-initiation, reacting to what Execration have been bringing. And now you've got this, this Warlock with the Agadim Shard, Shadow World cooldown, Talent picked up as well. So he's going to be keeping that push and sustain going down into that Radiant base from the mid lane and the top lane as creeps are converging towards Gambit's side of the map. Roshan is up, that means... Well, it's not showing on my screen, but Roshan should be up. Please, it's just not there. It's not in the pit. Knock, <laughs> knock, who's there? He's not at home. Well, it happens sometimes if you disconnect and the, the timer not quite working properly. We'll, uh, we'll see when he respawns with a little white dot in the in the, man, in the minimap. <laughs> this is prime position, though, for Execration. Hold the triangle. Make sure that the space is limited for Gambit. Cut out the waves. I think Roshan needs some justice. We always kill, kill, and kill Roshan. We never ask, like, how's Roshan? Well, is he doing okay? We used to give him a party hat and a Santa hat. Or to jump in from Lauren up. All right. The sniper will get there. the Hex coming through onto the Bloodseeker 2. The Chainstone's off to him, but they turn back with the AM. Palos is cruising through these heroes, and the perfect stun set down gives him a double kill. Afterlife is next. Dream is going to be dealt with. Though, pretty quickly by Palos, a triple for your AM, and GG is called. Just like you said, it was coming after maybe one more fight, and the AM's turn to get an ultra kill. They know. They have uh, no damage whatsoever. Anti-Mage got uh, way too big. Uh, mixed damage coming up from the last track. Deals well with pretty much everyone on their side. Uh, Lifestyle never going to feel comfortable just getting on top of him because of the Edict. Uh, Storm Spirit. You know, this time around, even after having a really good start, first five minutes, uh, couldn't really deliver. Tough game for him. You know, that Yule Scepter, a lot of stacks. I, that's uh, one way how they managed to make a comeback into this game, because Warlock was doing uh, so much in the lane, enabling AM and also stacking uh, those jungle camps for him. He gets a Yule Scepter, one big kill, and suddenly Storm Spirit just doesn't feel as a hero. <laughs> that was fun! You should do it again sometime!